Hey, welcome to another Deep Snow edition of Snowmobiler Television. On this show, we're headed back to Grizzly Lodge in British Columbia. But when I say we, I don't mean me, because we got some of the guys that help us out with STV and OSM headed there while I'm here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, hanging out with Articat. It's going to be a good show, so stick around. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris Snowmobiles, together we are born for more. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of trucks for 53 years. Tough, smart, capable. Grizzly Lodge is one of the top destinations that we've been to with STV and when we had the opportunity to go back, we were going back. Unfortunately, the dates didn't line up for me, but that allowed a couple of the fellas who help us out with STV head west to the lodge. First up is Jeremy. He's the other half of the Supreme Commander at the OSM and STV office, Sarah. Jeremy has been helping out behind the scenes and at trade shows and on rides for years, but has never had the chance to go west and ride in the mountains. So this is his first time in the steep and deep. The next guy is Dan Scallett, who is the president of the OSM Riders Union. He's made his way from Minnesota to join on the ride. Dan is a tough as nails rider who has raced cross country sleds, motocross bikes, and is just an overall badass guy. This is not his first time in the Alpine, but it is his first time at the Grizzly Lodge or even in BC. The boys also have Brock Hoyer on the ride with them. He's basically a local and has been to Grizzly plenty of times. He's also a pro rider for Timbersled, and I'm sure he'll be an asset helping dig Jeremy out at some point. Grizzly Lodge is located up in the mountains off an active logging road, so getting there can be an adventure in itself. For guests arriving to Kamloops on an airplane like two of our guys, transportation can be arranged through the lodge to get there, but for this trip, Brock has taken the fellas up to the lodge in his truck. Now, if you're driving to the lodge, you need to be prepared for the logging road with a radio to announce where you are on the road to truck traffic coming towards you. And the road is also pretty steep and icy, so drivers need to be prepared for that too. This year, the logging road is open right to the lodge, so Brock can drive right up. Other seasons, the last leg of the trip is on snowmobiles, so you need to be prepared for that scenario too. Now, this all sounds like it takes a lot of effort, but once you get to the lodge, you realize that the adventure just getting there was worth it. Coming up here just to ride up the road was an experience that it just built on the, the atmosphere up here. I've seen all the trees and the logging trails and the heights that you're looking down from already. It's already intimidating. So being out in the trees at this altitude is gonna be something I'm looking forward to seeing and it's intimidating. My mountain riding experience is zero, zero experience flatland backcountry riding the extent three four feet of powder tops this alpine riding is going to be a bit of a learning curve for me my experience is i'm a trail pounder my whole life i pounded trails i beat down trails all across the midwest flatland and just in the last few years i've decided to take up mountain riding so would i rate myself a mountain rider heck no i'm I'm a learner, and that's why I'm out here, is to, to open my horizons a little bit more as to this type of riding. I have no idea what we're going into. I don't know who's gonna be getting stuck the most, but I'm hoping. It's try not to keep up with the young guys. That's, that's the key, I think. Who's the young guys here? Yeah, Grizzly Lodge is always a good time. You know, it's always a good laugh. It's probably one of my favorite places by far for backcountry. We have good snow, good base now. 
Um, so you get a little bit of wiggle room on, uh, you know, try not to get stuck. But uh, I think these guys will have a lot of fun out here. It's, uh, I think you can't not have fun out here. That's the problem. It's, uh, it's just a cool atmosphere, good people, and, and the riding terrain out here, especially snow bike country. You know, there's such many great tree lines, um, open cliff banks, lakes, beds, pillows. Um, it's a vast place. Like I swear every time I come up here, I always find something new and different and uh, never hit the same tracks once or twice. So it's, uh, it's a great place to be. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go that way and come back. Wish me luck. Best advice I could give is listen to your guides. <laughs> Follow their lead, get comfortable on the equipment, the terrain. Turning on the flatlands a hell of a lot different than turning on the slopes. Definitely, the slopes were, the slopes with the trees and the tree wells and the, the hard and soft pockets, it's either, it was either sucking you into the tree or it was pushing you to go into another tree. So I mean, going between the trees was, it was like a balancing act that was just hard to get used to on the, on the hills. It's a tough learning curve. It just makes you want to try harder. There's so much to experience up there. I can't wait to get back out tomorrow, oh, if I can walk. I'm and looking breathe. forward to tomorrow. I think I got a whole new game plan for tomorrow. My second half was good. I reevaluated myself, got a, took a little advice from the, the guides. Confidence. Confidence went up. I don't think I put it in any tree wells the second half. I came close, but nothing like the tree well I did send it into. So you got the first stock, I probably had the most. I had probably three or four rollovers just to get unstuck. Is it? And without these guides, we'd still be up there. I'm either gonna try a snow bike or a, another different rental sled of a 155. Change up the flavor a little bit. I'm gonna go with something possibilities are endless. It is. It's like, what should we do tomorrow? Which, what are we going to be riding? I like what about it. toboggans? <laughs> Let's get a ride up and toboggan down. Is there a bunny hill so we can start on? <laughs> <laughs> this is so relaxing out here. Just if I could get a little massage, and maybe a little back rub, things would be so nice. Just kind of, hey, what the hell is this, Dan? You told me you were going to wear a bathing suit. I don't know. I think, th is that yours? All right, guys, who lost the suit? Jesus. What's pretty cool about here is people originally booked to come to Grizzly Lodge to go snowmobiling but we want them to leave realizing their, their time here is more about the entire experience of uh, our staff at the lodge, the sleds we run here, our guides, uh, the terrain, the amazing food that our chefs put out, 
uh, you know, hot tub, sauna, massage therapist. We really want to create a total experience that's based around snowmobiling, but regardless of snow conditions, time of year, we've really noticed that guests actually appreciate the lodge experience, interaction with the staff uh, and their friends, their time here, even more so than the sledding itself. And it's, it's interesting because people often, first timers will be so worried about time of year they come, snow conditions, and after they've been here once, that usually fades away and they go, we'll come anytime, we don't care whether there's snow or not. So it's pretty cool to see that side of the business really impact people about their experience at the lodge with our staff and uh, what we have to offer here. I get this question a lot, why do I keep coming back to Grizzly Lodge? And I think it's, it's actually a pretty entertaining story. I mean, I've ridden essentially all my life and I've only ridden two places in Canada. I've ridden Whistler like way back in the day and, and Grizzly Lodge. And, uh, you know, I got exposed to Grizzly Lodge in 2012 uh, and it, it took one time to come up here and experience this this place. Um, obviously the riding is, is really good. Uh, that's, that's one of the reasons I come back, but um, there's lots of good riding everywhere. It's, it's more about the experience of just to have an incredible place like this in literally the middle of nowhere that you have essentially the whole place to yourself uh, as far as the riding and the snow quality, uh, just everything about it. Uh, they, they truly make this an experience, not just a place to go ride. Uh, the, the staff, the food, the lodging, uh, just everything about it, it's, it's pretty magical. What works out so well for us is, um, you know, Adam and his crew, it's just like coming home. I mean, it's, it, you know, the, they treat you like family. Uh, it's a very friendly atmosphere. Uh, and and like, I, like I mentioned, it's not just all about the riding. As I grow older, I really love just the whole experience of snowmobiling, not just going out there doing gnarly lines. It's, it's about just having a great time. And that's something that when I came here, I was like, so wait a minute, like the riding's just right there? I mean, you, you literally leave from the lodge in 10 minutes, you're in some of the best riding in the world. Um, and so, you know, that, that obviously was a big, a big thing for me. And then, you know, we operate here in both early December and late April, uh, and both are conditions that I just don't get in Colorado. I mean, the snowpack here in early December is is really good, and over the last few Aprils, uh, the snow quality has been unreal. And so, to be able to have just stellar conditions on both ends of my season uh, was a perfect fit for us to to bring people up here. So today, I dropped down to 155. I got to ride it harder, longer, and a lot more comfortable, which is what I wanted for the experience out here. Less holes, less trenches. Less trenches, less digging, less ski poles. I don't know how many, how many did you have to have today? I think I had all of them. I think I had every single one. I rode the same sled as yesterday. So familiarized with myself with it yesterday, comfortable with it. I did a lot more hard turns, put myself in a lot more hot spots, wristed a little more, still got stuck. I probably was best off just staying with the 163. I'm just gonna say that it was really nice to have this guy with us oh. who could come get us out. <laughs> We'd well, still you be guys, up there. And you guys did good, yeah, definitely. I, I feel like both of you guys stepped it up second day. That new chaos definitely su suited you a lot more, shorter track, really nimble. 
you know, uh, yeah, you guys, we, we put you in some cool places today, and, uh, you know, you did good. You guys, I think you guys, did, everyone did good on the team. I was uh, pretty surprised. You know, East Coast guys, you never know, right? But, no, I think we did good. We had fun. I think it's really nice that the guides looked at our experience and kind of felt us out first and didn't take us into anything extreme right away and drop us in and wreck it for the whole weekend. It kind of eased us in and kept taking us deeper, better, more extreme as we got more acclimated with the stuff. We had the tools if we had gotten any trouble, but they're not going to put us in a situation where we're going to be over our head. Every single time we went out, we were confident, we were comfortable, we were coming back. And this country is, is super safe. You know, we've got a groom trail all the way up to the mark point, a gas drop, and then it just kind of plateaus out at different lake spots and, and lots of real good scenarios. You know, it's very well mapped out. All the guides know where they're going. Everyone knows when we leave where we're going. Um, you know, this is probably one of the safer mountains that I ride on a, on a day to day. And, uh, you know, we get to see some real cool, safe terrain and, uh, and just get to have fun and, and find the fresh snow and see who uh, hasn't touched it yet. It's something I'd like to do every year. I'd love to have the time, and if I get the opportunity, I'm going to be back 100%. That whole experience, right? You're right up the trail. You're, you know, you're 18 kilometers from your trucks. You know, you've got a little Wi-Fi to still stay a little connected with everyone. And then you just load up, and you don't even burn much fuel because you're 3, 4K, and you're in, you're full Alpine. So it's, it's. When are you going to go home? Then? Ever? I feel like I never want to go home. I feel like I hope they're going to put a name on the door here, and I'll just stay here forever. I love winter because I love snowmobiles, but I don't necessarily love the cold, at least as not as much as I used to. Back in the day, I would always look for the sled with the lowest possible windshield. Nowadays, I don't mind the bigger windows. I guess I just like being warm, which has nothing to do with getting older. Staying warm on a snowmobile can get tricky at times, even with today's high-tech outerwear systems, especially when you have to manage huge swings in temperature and different levels of exertion throughout the day. Staying warm at the end of a ride after you've been playing for a while and maybe a little sweaty is tough and potentially dangerous. Riding down the mountain at the end of a day is a good example. Now, you might be wondering, is there a better way? Well, here's a solution. The E-Wool Vest. That's a nice comfortable vest. It fits on uh, really nice underneath my riding gear. It doesn't interfere with riding at all. You don't even know you're wearing it. Probably the best thing for it would be the ride home at the end of the evening. When you're heading back to the lodge and you're all hot and sweaty, just turn it on and enjoy the comfort ride back to the lodge before the hot tub. This garment is meant to be worn over your base layer and under your jacket. It's fitted to hug your gentle curves and that's because it's electric. Inside the e-wool vests are heating loops that warm up via a battery pack inside the vest itself, which can last all day. Now the electrics can also be plugged into the 12 volt system of your ride to extend usage time and there's 100% coverage by the heating elements that start to heat up 3 seconds after you push the button. We were able to try it up in the Alpine, it gets hot quick, within seconds not minutes. Run it on low on the way up, turn the thing off when you start sweating and when you start to cool off you can turn this thing to high and it'll warm you up in a hurry. Back home where I work. At Ontario Hydro, we're out on the road. We get chilled down fast. We start sweating. We need to warm up. We cool down. We turn the thing off, turn the thing on as we need it. I think this will be a pretty handy tool back home as well as here in the Alpine. The E-Wool vest wasn't specifically designed with snowmobiling in mind. This is a garment that has a ton of useful scenarios. Really, any time work or play takes you outside in the cold, the E-Wool vest can take the edge off. If you work in the emergency services or in construction, you have to go outside no matter what the freezing temps are like, and a heated vest can help you stay warm and productive. Even other recreational uses like hunting, fishing, and motorcycling are times the e-wool vest can keep you going. In addition, the different selectable heating levels can be set to fit your activity. If you're working hard, the vest can be turned down or even off when you're making your own heat, then it can be adjusted up as activity levels go down. The vest is also made from the most durable fabrics to ensure a long life and with proper accessories can be tailored to your application. 
The vest comes with an internal battery for normal use that lasts all day, but if you need more heat, an additional battery can be attached to the auxiliary input, or this input can be attached to the electrical system of your machine. Lastly, at the end of the day, with the battery removed, the Ewell vest is machine washable to get it ready for your next adventure. The Ewell vest is designed in Canada and a great way to extend your riding season or stay warm at work. But it's also a great way to get that significant other, the one who's always cold on a snowmobile, to actually get out and ride with you. Hey, thanks for hanging with us this week on STV. Remember, it doesn't matter if you're riding lakes back east or mountains out west. If you don't know, don't go. Until next time, we'll see you. STV has been brought to you by Ultimax Belts. Performance driven, performance proven. CKX, wear your passion. On Snow Magazine, for snowmobilers, from snowmobilers. Hey, welcome to this week's comment for YouTube comment of the day. And this one comes to us from our 2020 snowmobile early season uh, chat that we did last year in our show number 13. And uh, the comment is from Mark Hudson. And Mark, you write um, at time code 650, you bring up the color. Jeff, I absolutely agree that the SRX should return in blue. 1998 through 2002, Yamaha Blue was the only choice. I've convinced my boss slash owner of the Power Sports dealership that I work for to Power Surge bring in three. Had they been in blue, I would have talked him into six. Two for myself. <laughs> you go, Mark. Two would have been awesome. And I totally agree with you. The color should be blue. Yamaha SRXs are blue, not black. Now, the black one is a pretty badass looking sled, but it ain't blue. So hopefully, I know Yamaha's looking and watching and reading this stuff that in 2021, the SRX is back in blue. Anyways, I love reading these comments, so keep them coming.